Hello campers and welcome back. As we see in the previous example we talked about a function. The function we used was a void function translation. It had no return type. It was void. It had a name. We're going to call this one thing for now. It took no parameters and all it had was a simple piece of code that said something. In our last one we called it header. So there we have thing. So if we're sitting inside main, we call the function call thing just by calling the function with the set of parentheses after it. We're used to seeing this. For example, it's not going to work, but cn.ignore was a function. No, not coin. cn.ignore is a function. Um, cn.clear is a function. And you know it's a function because it has a name and it's got the parentheses at the end. So we're just making our own functions rather than calling libraries of functions. Pow was a function for finding uh, powers. So what happens when this is called again? Main starts execution. It comes down to thing. Thing branches up and into the function up here and then returns back down. Now if I had a separate function, thing1 and thing2, we'll call this one 2, two. I would have to write a function called thing2. We'll do a little copy pasta. And I can actually call thing. It'll branch to thing. It'll do its thing, come back down. It'll call thing two, branch up to thing two, call thing two, and branch down. And if we run it, you'll see there we go. I'm in thing, I'm in thing two. Now, interestingly enough, since main is a function, from any function you can call another function. So if I wanted to call thing2 from thing, I could actually call thing2 from thing. But look what happens. Thing2 doesn't know anything about, or thing doesn't know anything about thing2. If you remember when we did variables, we had to declare them in order. Bob and Jim have to be in the right order. You can't say Bob equals Jim because it really has no idea who Jim is because Jim is declared after it. So order of declaration matters for these things. Now you'll notice if we go back to our thing and thing2 example, I could actually take thing and call thing from thing2 and that's perfectly fine. So you could actually run this thing like this where I don't want to call it here. I'm in thing, I'm in thing2. So main passes control to thing2, which passes control to thing, which prints out the message, bounces down to thing2, prints out its message, bounces back to main and finishes. I'm in thing, bounce, 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 bounce. So functions can be called from any other function. You don't have to necessarily have a direct path just from main. You can call up and down. But just like variables were declared, just like I showed with Bob and Jim, they have to be available and understand that it exists. So thing2 knows about thing, but thing does not know about thing2. What, what makes this a problem is you can imagine for a simple program like this, if I knew, for example, that I had to have thing call thing2, but thing2 never had to call thing, I could just move things around. I can just come up here and play a cut and pasta with our friendly little code. And now thing knows all about thing too. So I could do this the same way. Boom. I'm in thing, I'm in thing too, I'm back in main. So in this case, main calls thing, bonk, which calls thing too. But it's a vertical call. This is the, the, the pre-definition of things. So what we have to do is we have to find a way of telling the program about all the functions that exist so that no matter who needs to call whom, they can do it without having to worry about ordering these things around. Right now we've only got a couple. Can you imagine 10, 20, 30,000 functions being called and having to put them all in the right order no matter what happens in your code? You'd go crazy. So the way we solve this is this thing called prototyping. 
Prototyping allows us to declare what a function is going to take and do without actually telling you how it's going to do it. So the way you do this is you prototype above main, prototypes go up here, and you implement below main down here. Watch. If I copy all these guys, I'm going to turn these guys into prototypes. Now a prototype consists strictly of the return type, the function name, and the parameter list types, which we haven't started covering yet, but for, so right now it's empty. So thing2 gets that, thing1 gets this, and what you now have are two function prototypes that are kind of like uh, pinky swears or pinky promises. I promise, even though you can't do anything with me now, you will eventually find me in the code when you compile the methods that you need, the functions that you need to be able to make this work. So you just keep looking and eventually you'll come across, oh, there they are, the definition and the implementation of this. So prototypes define what you're going to promise to do later. Implementation below shows you exactly how to do it. And when you do this, it doesn't matter now who calls whom. You can literally have thing2 call thing. So thing2 can call thing. And then thing could call thing2 like we just saw there. So I can come down here, once again, into my main and call thing2. Thing so that thing2 now can say, okay, call thing2, call thing. And you notice if, you, if this was the way it was before, Thing2 would know nothing about Thing, but I've promised. I know everything about this code. It doesn't matter what order they're in anymore. These guys down here can, can call anybody at any point in time. Oop, I got to give it a wee bit of a space right there. There we go. See? Main calls Thing2, which calls Thing, which says, I'm in Thing. Thing two calls itself, comes back to thing two, finishes the code, goes back to main and says, I'm in main, boom, boom. So functions and function design become this concept of this. Prototype above, tell me what it is you're going to be doing, and then implement below where you can show me exactly what you're doing with all kinds of other implementation details down here. This is the fundamentals of functions. You need to do this. We no longer declare our functions above main because that gets too, too messy and you gotta scroll through line after line of code just to get down to what main is doing. So declare your prototypes, implement them below main, and then call them as you need them inside main. Hope you're having a great day.